It's the big one. So as you can see, this set is huge. I am telling you, man, probably the biggest set I've built to this day. Uh, this is the Halo Mega Constructs Halo Infinite Pelican Inbound set from 2020. Um, right off the bat, this thing looks amazing. It was so fun to build, really intense building um, thing to go on, you know, a lot of parts, a lot of pieces and I had a great time building it. So we're gonna get right into this review and I'm gonna show you everything I can cause this is a massive set. So we're gonna start with the exterior. We're gonna work our way from the front to the back. Here you got the cockpit. You can see the shaping on here. They really captured that well with all these angles. These are just hinged into place. So you got two hinges here and then one back here to make it fall right into where it needs to go. This canopy is one piece, special molded and it, it looks great. Uh, you got, you know, these printed UNSC logos printed up here, little warning stickers that would be on the ship, those are printed. These intakes are printed as well. Everything on here that looks like a detail is a print, which is cool because that's what Mega Constructs does now. They don't really mess with stickers anymore like they used to. So that's, uh, they went up Lego there with that, you know. So yeah, there's the cockpit. You can get a front view. This thing is just massive. It does not fit anywhere. Uh, let's see, back up a little bit, yeah there you go, there's the front of the cockpit, the nose, you have this little gun underneath which uses just like a kind of standard uh, machine gun turret on a swivel and a hinge so you can aim down about that far, aim up. We're going to get more of the uh, underside later but yeah for right now that's the cockpit. So moving up from the cockpit, you have the uh, upper section of the ship right here in the middle body. You know, you got those intakes I showed you, uh, more vent details, these little bits of gray pieces really add to detail with that. You move back and you get more printed pieces on this angled slope right here for more intakes, more warning logos. And then it just goes back. You have this nice shaping down here, a little more detail, little vents, little studs, UNSC on either side underneath these fins, both sides. A big, massive slope down intake for these two engines. And you get more there, more little bits of detail and stuff like that on the top. Over here on the wings, the wings look nice, especially from above. All angles, these wings look great, but you got the, this huge, massive, traditional, uh, early days of Halo UNSC logo here with the really nice uh, eagle in there. You know, it's all printed well. You have a red light at the tip, a little bit of a detail here, pieces there, and that's uh, the same on both sides. That covers it for the top. So getting a closer look at the wings, they pivot on a little ratchet, so you can they can pivot 360 degrees because it's landed. It can't move that much. You have two lights up here. What this black piece? I don't know if that's supposed to be an engine intake. They left it black so it doesn't look that cool, but you know it's there. Instead of it just being you know nothing being there up so you can really see that turn this around you can get a look at the underside you have some munitions here what looks to be like a missile pod and some racks for other munitions you could put uh, exhaust right here for the downward thrust 
And then you have the thruster on the back. You have all that gray leading up to it. it looks really good in there. And both wings are the same. You come to the side here, you can see uh, some stuff. We'll get into that. So here we have the main landing gear. Right now it's resting on some clear bricks. But you can, these actually work and they work well. So this is all built up with uh, pieces, with bricks. You have this huge UNSC logo on the still, like they do in the games. You have this little actuator here. That doesn't do anything right now, but you'll see what it does. You have this uh, cutoff right here. Rubber bands in there, hold it in place. Now it's stuck there, it won't go back up. And both sides do that. And if you were to take this out, which we'll do right now, it rests on there, not as well as it can. You can start to see it open up here because these aren't fully attached down there. It's not the safest hold, it will do it, but I would recommend using these uh, colored uh, clear bricks underneath because it just holds it on there well. You know, you have all that stability and you don't have to worry about anything breaking. But yeah, that, to get that to go up, you can either push in from here manually, outside, and it snaps right back into place. You have this little stopper right here, this little peg that sticks out to stop it from going any higher. On the inside, there's another way to actuate this, and I'll show you that from above. So if you come up to the top, you have this panel that's hinged in two spots, down here and right here, and you can just pull that up. You could, you know, bend it like that if you want to. This gives you access to the two actuators. You have these bars that come all the way up. You pull this in, you hear that. The landing gear uh, gets pulled right back up into its uh, retracted position, and that's on both sides. You have some rubber band assemblies in there that I can show you later when we get fully into the interior. We're gonna move on to the tail. So here at the tail, you can see that UNSC logo. Uh, the light is kinda in there, there you go. It's reflecting onto this, that's not actually printed, that's the reflection on, because these, these pieces are nice and glossy, they're real shiny. So here's the engines, the rear engines, they move as well. You can get bound that, uh, you can get it down about that far, you can go up that far. You have the same kind of uh, thruster as on the main wing engines, and you have the same kind of uh, downward thrust. All this is built up to, you know, add a little bit of detail in there. You have these little tiny wings that come out the side. Uh, the front has a little bit of a detail there, some more gray in there, and they work really well. This one, you can hear the ratchet, so it really snaps into place. This one doesn't for some reason, it's like really smooth. It's not loose, it just moves smooth for some reason. I don't know if maybe it's a faulty joint, or uh, I didn't click it in all the way. I can't seem to get it any further in, so I don't know what that is, but it's not a problem. It doesn't hinder anything, doesn't make it less stable, it just doesn't click around, which I kind of like more than the clicking. So here we are at the underside of the Pelican. This is the main body up here, the nose up here. You have the little nose gun, so you can get a better look at that. Tilts down like that, tilts up like that, and you have forward landing gear, a little set of uh, four wheels, and this actually retracts, so you can see it's kind of loose there. You bend it backwards and down, and it's fully encased, it doesn't stick out, and it's well hidden in there for if you want to display this in flight mode, if you can have get like a stand for it, maybe more of these clear br bricks or uh, a wicked brick stand would be really cool on one of these. And so that works really well, you know, you just pull it out all the way forward and it's ready to go. Now if you move back, you got these uh, nice uh, supports to help stabilize the bottom there, all this detailing down here. Looks like you have room to mount a vehicle. You can probably make some kind of makeshift mount for say a Warthog or a Mongoose. Scorpion tank, you might be pushing it. Uh, I don't know if it'll fit. I don't know if it'll hold on as well, but you might be able to figure something out there. This is the uh, main uh, ramp in the back, and that opens up really well. We're gonna show you uh, more of that once I get towards the interior. So getting onto that interior, we're gonna pull up this nose canopy. It's hinged back here and that pulls up very easily, goes all the way up. And in here you can start to see some figures. We have the pilot and Master Chief back there. We're gonna take these guys out so you can get a better look at all of the stuff going on in the cockpit here. So here we go, we have the main controls. There's this printed uh, panel. You have all those details. You have some steering yokes up here and the seat for him. He fits in there really well. And you bend this out of the way to get his feet in there and then you bend it back forward as far as you want farther back you have this open space and you have two 
of the same printed uh, plates. I'm gonna pull one of those out so you can see those better. There's a look at the uh, plates. There's the same one on the opposite side of that little hallway. Some uh, diagnostics of the Pelican going on here, power levels and stuff, showing you different engine parts and all that, and they look pretty good. You can read that. All it is is just a list of random numbers, so there's no actual words in there, but it's a nice piece of detail. Here's a closer look at that flight control panel. You know, it's got just a bunch of lights and knobs printed in there, some scopes and whatnot, and it looks pretty good. So to get main access to the interior, what you're going to want to do is you're going to bend these engines forward like that, both sides. Then you're going to take these assemblies and bend those up forward or backward. And then we're going to come over to the tail and remove a piece. Oh, don't forget though, I forgot, uh, this comes up as well. You're going to want to pull that up. So when you get to the tail, you have this little uh, lever here. You're going to simply pull that off, and then we're going to open the interior. This is a massive undertaking. So now what we do is we're going to split the two halves. They're connected by ball joints, and that opens up like so. Look at that. There's a lot of stuff in here, so we're gonna try and hit all of it. First, you got that loading ramp. We're gonna bend that down. You have all of these grates in here that are just to make a smooth surface for these two walls to come out. And uh, each side is different. They're built the same way, but you have the uh, little details are a little different. You can start to see those rubber bands that help with the uh, loading, or I mean the landing gear. So you can bring those down too to help kind of stabilize these swing arms. And we're going to get closer, we're going to start with the armory side. So here you can get a good look at everything going on here. You have this uh, printed kind of uh, utility section with some screen buttons and some probably doors or panels in there. You have a pistol, a bulldog shotgun, and then an assault rifle. Then you have a uh, little fire extinguisher up here. You can see more of that mechanism. It's retained with a rubber band down there to slap it in. And then this is the rubber band that swoops around and puts tension on the landing gear. So when you pull that, it flies straight up. That's pretty cool. This is one of the ball joints that connects to the other side. So that's just a yellow jay to stand out. You have a little, what looks like a bench here, more grates down here. You can stand figures on here pretty well. So if we take, say, the pilot, you can just uh, put him on there and he stands well. He stays there. You know, if you move it around, he's gonna slip off. There's a lot more standing room down here. But now let's go over to the other side and take a look at that. So over here, you have a single seat. You have the same panel piece as over there, same exact print. You have another more special print for the Master Chief suit diagnostic. And you can see the rubber band system again. One single seat, right? like I said, but you can plug the Master Chief in there. He's got a peg hole in his back so he can kind of just uh, plug right in. Uh, the chair sometimes falls out. You just got to press it back down. But yeah, he'll sit there. He'll stay in. He's not going to fall out. Some uh, guards or something, maybe handholds for the figures. But yeah, it looks pretty good. My only complaint is that there's only one seat. I can understand with these mechanisms, you can't get more in there. The whole idea of being able to open this up and get all this access is great. And that that's the compromise, though. You don't get a lot of seating area. But, you know, you get that feature of being able to get in here easy. You have the armory on the other side. And I think for what you get, what you're able to do with it, it's great. At least you get one seat. So you can actually pop that seat off really easy to get them off. And then you just click it right back down on those studs. And it goes in there pretty well and it stays. Up here, we have the little mount that, as you saw in the Infinite trailer, when they're in the Pelican, you can plug Master Chief into the back of that. What I like to do is just pull it off. It's easier to fiddle with it once you get it off there and then plug it back in. And then you can have Master Chief kind of just hanging like he did in the trailer. And it looks pretty good. He stays there. You have all this movement, two joints, so you can really uh, get different angles with them, get them up high, get them down low onto the floor, and it works out pretty well. 
So here we can get a better look at the figures. This set comes with three. You have Master Chief, the pilot, a lot of people call him Brohammer, which I like that name. I think it works out well for him. Until the game comes out, we probably won't get a name for him, but for now, Brohammer is nice. And you have a Banished Hunter, which looks really good. You only get one though, so it doesn't come in a pair with another one like Hunters usually do. So if you want another one, for now, you're probably just going to have to buy another one of these sets. Though I'm sure they'll release more of these down the line. So you can probably just wait for those, but yeah, it looks great. So we're going to get, we're going to start with the Master Chief and move all the way down. So looking at here, you can see all the metal detail in the Master Chief's armor. They did print applications or paint. You know, you got some paint applications up here for those little spots, those black and silver. And then you got silver around all the lines on the armor to really make it pop. The helmet looks great. I got a really good print on this Master Chief right here. You got the shoulder pads. Those classic uh, Mark 7, I mean Mark 6 sh uh, shoulder pads shown up here instead of the ones from the trailer. Which I gotta look back at those because I don't remember how different they look from Mark 6, but I like Mark 6 uh, shoulder pads there. You got the knee pads, you got the um, all that armor. They have the standard uh, Mega Constructs articulation, so you have that hinge and ball joint on the shoulder. Then you have another hinge and ball on the elbow. So it is, they call them micro action figures and that's really what they are. They have a really good amount of posability for the size. You know, you get that up there. The only um, thing is the knees are the only part that has like the least mobility and then you have no mobility in the ankles. But the rest of it like is just great. You know, you even have uh, waist articulation too, which is something you don't see in a lot of small things like this. Heads on a ball joint. Great looking helmet again, can't stress that enough. Uh, back of the helmet, we don't have any print for the AI port, but you can see the back of the armor here. You have that peg hole, more of his undersuit, butt plate, all that stuff. Just an overall good looking figure. Painted well, molded well, and it looks great. And each figure comes with one of these black uh, stands that Mega does, just for like to help the figure stand up, which they don't even need. They stand up well on their own. They have the best um, kind of what do you want to call it? Stability? You know? Well, no, there you go. That doesn't look too good. Uh, but yeah, they stand up on their own. They stand up well. You get them into a pose, they'll stand up decently well, right? We're going to move on to the pilot. The pilot here, or Bro Hammer, he comes with a lot of stuff. So first off, you can see this uh, pilot helmet on here. You can see the mic painted in silver, the visor painted in black, the helmet molding looks really good. He has this uh, sort of pilot's vest as well that has some pouches on it too. So we can take that helmet off. It goes on his head with a peg. And you can see the um, print on the face. If we can uh, get a little closer, you can see that. He has whites for his eyes, little holes for the uh, pupils and stuff. The printing isn't the best on mine. There's a, it's a little lacking on the bottom of the right below the mouth is not as much beard but it's still there you still get beard under there so it, it looks all right kind of almost looks like a, a captain price there almost like he had friendly mutton chops but the beard is still down there so it looks good the um got the ears too so i think the detail on the head is nice the detail on the vest is really nice i mean you got the armor in there go to the back you have the hole for the peg and then you have these uh straps that hang down and you can reverse those to go over his shoulders and I'll show you that. He's got the undersuit rolled up to his elbows, you know the uh, skin tone there for his arms and hands and he's got about the same amount of articulation as a chief though he has, oh yeah he does have the same. These uh, shoes don't move. On certain figures when they're dressed like this they do have movable feet. This one does not but yeah he looks good. We're gonna take off the vest which just slides off the top ever so slightly if I can get that. Come on. It did it before. Let's go. Might have to take the head off. Yeah, we probably do. Take the head off. There you go. Vest slides off. You can see more of that uh, under pilot suit, the jumper. And then we're going to flip this over. So there you go. You can see that uh, sort of strap set up there. I'm pretty sure they use these pieces for some of their Call of Duty figures. So it's just a regular piece they already have in their inventory but it, it works good and I think it's great you know you can use it both ways you can have it hanging down you can even like do one shoulder probably pull his arm out through this loop yep and you can have it kind of not hanging f uh, flat down because obviously it's 
I flipped this, but it works well. It, you know, you can put it on both shoulders, and I think it's a great little rubber piece. You can see the back of his uh, clothes molded well there. His hair even is uh, molded pretty well. Like, you can see the little peg hole though for his helmet, but it looks, he looks good, you know? It's a good figure to have. Moving on to the hunter. So here's the big boy himself, the banished hunter. Instead of being blue, his armor is dark gray with uh, hints of red all around. And it looks like he's gonna be using a fuel rod cannon that shoots uh, red plasma instead of green like we're used to. So that's gonna be interesting to see, you know, especially in game, if that's accurate to game. You can see his under skin is red instead of orange like traditionally. So that's a cool kind of uh, deviation from the norm. Uh, I don't know how accurate that's gonna be to game. Honestly, I don't care that it's not orange. I mean, red, you know, just as good. But we're gonna see how he looks in game eventually. Uh, you have these rubber spikes on the back that are all inserted with peg holes, so those are separate pieces. Uh, you can actually take the back plate off to have it like damaged, like he's been shot, and you can get at his uh, wormy insides and shoot him up. The chest piece can also pop off if you want to, but it's great, it stays on if you remove the back instead of just falling off to the front. And you can really see the detail on this piece, it's amazing. You, know, you got that red stripe, you got all those lines in there. Inside, you even have it molds, it's molded to match up with his uh, warm, uh, wormy torso, so it holds on there well. If you get that on there, stays on. And same with the, the back one. You can see a lot of that uh, detail down in there. All those lines. It just looks great. And then you have, uh, yeah, those are the holes for the spikes. Looks pretty good. Goes on him well. Oh no. See so yeah, how you just pop that back on. And it, there you go. The gun. Get a closer look at that. All these little red vials uh, are inserted. They're hard, clear plastic. You take those off. You have a peg hole for if you want to add like a blaster shot or bolt shot coming out. So you have some detail there. A bit more on those arms. Get up closer. You can see the shoulders. He has a little bit of a variation in the printing. This is his just offhand, I guess. Uh, the shield, I never even noticed that, but look at all the detail on the inside of the shield, all those etch marks. And this just plugs in with a peg hole to the outside of the arm. The outside of the shield looks just as great. All that detail, the painting here, and then the weathered painting for the silver line looks really good. So you can see that really well. All those little uh, flaking marks and stuff. Legs look pretty good. He has feet. His feet are on ball joints and he has some decent posability because of how um, how the hunters are shaped. It's not the best. Like he can't do a full 90, uh, 45 degree angle here or 90 degree I mean. Yeah. But he's got the ball and hinge joint for the shoulder so he can come out there, go there, point straight out, you know. Kind of point in across his chest a little bit. Same with the shield, the shield arm. So he can get it right in front of him. He can't really angle the shield that well. But yeah, he can shoot like that, I guess. His head is also on a ball joint. Let's get up closer to that so you can see the detail on there. All that sculpting in there. All it can really do is just turn. He can't really like pivot it on that ball joint. So there's not a whole bunch of mobility there. The thighs, or the hips rather, are on little ball joints so they wiggle around and forward and back. Can't splay the legs that much, but it works. He even has a uh, waist articulation. He has a ball joint up there. So you can really turn that all the way around if you want to. The knees are a ball and hinge. Not a whole lot to do in the hinge, but you have that ball joint that really spins all the way around and then you have a smaller ball joint for the foot, the ankle to go up and down like that, and you can turn it side to side a little bit. But you can get him in some decent poses as a hunter. Like sort of a traditional hunter's pose right there. And it, it looks well. Now for the, for the accessories, you have four guns. You have this little pistol that I think is going to be the sidekick, is what they're calling it. We saw in the gameplay trailer for Halo Infinite. 
so it's not the standard you know UNSC big magnum pistol that we're used to seeing in the games um, it's a good uh, sculpt for the pistol it looks like a you know a good generic pistol anyway so you can use that with Call of Duty or whatever or any kind of uh, series you want to uh, next up we have the assault rifle which is going back to sort of that uh, reach design you know you have that big grip down there you have all the segmented parts up here and the ammo counter even slides off so you can take it off and you can probably put sights on there they'll probably have some sights you can add on but yeah it it looks good the sculpt as well and next we have the new UNSC bullpup shotgun which has the uh, I don't know if it's a drum or a cylinder I think it's a, a removable drum I could be wrong you know you got that uh, forward grip for the slide then you have this uh, the rear grip like the pistol grip I just don't like how thin it is when it meets the gun itself I don't know if that'll break off or snap off easy but uh, it is what it is right the sculpt overall is good and next we have I don't know what this is called it really looks like a revamped version of the brute shot I like that blade down there that's why I'm getting that vibe you have the blade down here uh, you have the forward handle here the rear handle there just like on the old brute shot and you have a long decent barrel so can't wait to see what this actually is in game but so far my thought is it's a new brute shot next we have a little crate you know two-piece crate and inside you have two fragmentation grenades you see those a figure can hold the upper portion peg in his hand you get the little switch on there for probably priming it and then yeah you can even see it's got the fragments you know etched out pretty well so those are cool you get two of those they go right in this little box with the little mega blocks piece that's how old this piece is uh, back when they still called it mega blocks so it's not a new mold or anything but you know it works it's not a bad piece you know you got the clips on the sides to uh, help with uh, figures grabbing them it stays together pretty well Here's a quick size comparison to the Warthog set that came out the same year, 2020. Warthog actually scales pretty well with that. You can see it right there. And then there's the Halo Infinite Mongoose set. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but that scales well too. Let's see if you can actually get it in the um, troop bay like you could in Halo 3. So even after taking both figures off the Mongoose, you know, it'll go up the ramp, but it will not fit in that troop bay. The um, bars stick out a little too far. There's some pieces on the sides of the walls, just don't allow it to get in there. Sideways, not even. So that's a little unfortunate, you know, can't fit it in the troop bay. But the troop bay is smaller than you would expect, but with the uh, added features. But it does look nice next to the pelican. You could probably even get a little hook and hook it up there if you wanted to. Here it is next to that uh, Scorpion tank set that had the multiple build choices with the Mega Constructs app. It is... The, the scorpion is already pretty big, but you can see the sheer size of that pelican is amazing. I can't stress how much I love this set. It's probably my favorite uh, building set from any brand this year so far. So that about covers it for my review of the Halo Infinite uh, Mega Constructs Pelican Inbound set from 2020. Overall, I think it's an amazing set. The build quality is nice. The build experience is really fun and uh, engaging it might be a little difficult for younger kids uh, there there are some complex parts especially with these large sections of the the rear body that involve the um, mechanism but other than that I think it's a really nice uh, build process it looks great on display uh, you have the functionality too you got all the moving parts that you need and overall I think it's a great amazing set I highly recommend it for any halo fan any uh, construction uh, building set fans like Lego or Mega Constructs. Maybe you don't like Halo, you, you just never got into it, but if you like something that looks good and it's fun to build, there it is. We're going to end this review off with some snapshots of the set. Thanks for watching.